So I'm going to go forward with a conversation about the economic and political case for climate action. Let me say this. In the United States, the debate on climate action is often reduced to the framework of jobs versus the environment. Our, op our opponents say you can't have both. You can't have a healthy economy and a healthy environment. And this frame has made for an incredibly partisan debate. In fact, it's the statistically most partisan conversation in American politics. And it's frozen our hopes for any meaningful action out of our Congress in the near term. But my home state of California has followed a different model. We've used a different coalition and built a different policy framework. And as a result, California is growing its economy and creating jobs while leading the United States in transitioning to clean energy. We believe that the conversation about climate change is really our opportunity to articulate a vision for a better future and to turn that vision into reality. We know that climate change is more than just an environmental issue. It is a profoundly human issue, one that ties directly to how we live our lives, how we care for our kids, and the kind of world we want to leave for the next generation. And that's where the California political message, specifically focusing on local jobs and local health, has become a critical part of making the case for action on climate in the United States of America. In America and around the world, there remains a shocking and inexcusable gap between the few and the many. Addressing climate change and transitioning to clean energy is a critical opportunity to help close that gap, both by mitigating the negative impacts on our health and communities and by ensuring that we're creating good paying, clean energy jobs that will support generations to come. In California, we've seen both these impacts and opportunities firsthand. For one thing, we're experiencing our fourth year of drought, quite famously, and it's expected to cost us $2.7 billion this year and 21,000 jobs. In California, more than 70% of the people there live in communities that have unhealthy air, and we have over 3 million people, almost 10% of our population suffers from asthma. These impacts, especially on some of our most vulnerable communities, bring climate change home in a very real, very local, and very human way. And believe me, Californians have taken notice. In California, as is true around the world, the oil and gas industry wields enormous political power. In order to counter their interests, we knew that we'd have to activate a diverse and inclusive coalition that included businesses, included unions, and included community leaders from every part of our state, and specifically including communities of color. And that's what we've done. And what we've found is when that coalition sticks together, we can prevail time and time again. In 2010, that coalition successfully defeated two Texas oil companies who were trying to roll back our progressive energy laws. In 2012, that, that coalition passed a proposition to close a tax loophole and use the money to retrofit our schools for energy. And that has already sent hundreds of millions of dollars for retrofits. Just this past summer, we brought together a coalition that included all those people, top California companies, organized labor, community organizers, and even all three of our investor-owned utilities to stand up for a brighter, cleaner future for our families. There is a reason I'm proud of my state. We are the eighth largest economy in the world, and we have almost half a million advanced energy workers. We're number one in the US in installed solar capacity, number one in total advanced energy investment, and number one in electric vehicle sales. But what's important to that story, and the reason that that's been possible, is that by assembling this unique coalition to support our legislators and our governor, 
We've managed to put the right energy framework in place and pave the way for California businesses to do what they do best, which is to innovate and create. Because California doesn't want to just have the right framework. We also want to lead when it comes to solutions. So while we've created and expanded a strong cap and trade market that's expected to bring in two and a half billion dollars this year, we've also modernized the grid to allow for more clean energy, and we've promoted electric vehicles. This past September, our governor, Jerry Brown, signed legislation that mandates that our mix of renewable energy sources become 50% by 2030, and that we double our energy efficiency in the 600,000 commercial buildings in California. In addition, Governor Brown and California have led the under two MOU, which has organized 80 state and local governments to reaffirm their pledges to reduce GHG emissions 80% by 2050. So those 80 municipalities and states would constitute together the largest economy in the world bigger than the United States of America. And we've done this while California has been growing faster than the rest of the United States. Last year, California's clean tech industry attracted more venture capital than the other 49 states put together. And if you look at what the California tech companies are doing, like Apple, Facebook, Google, they are implementing clean energy on a global basis. So my conclusion and the big point I'm trying to make is that the argument that we can't address climate change while still growing our economy is simply not true. And if the US follows California's lead, our analysis, which we came out with about three weeks ago, has found that clean energy can be a critical part of ensuring a prosperous economic future for the whole country. The analysis found that accelerating the transition to a clean energy economy would lead to the creation of more than a million net new jobs by 2030 and about two million net new jobs by 2050. And it would raise disposable incomes and lower energy bills. What this study doesn't account for is the cost of inaction. Citigroup, not normally considered a wild and crazy place, predicts that inaction on climate change could result in $44 trillion worth of lost global GDP by 2060. So the risks and rewards of acting versus not acting have completely flipped. Business as usual, the preferred outcome for our opponents doesn't work anymore. Now, in California, as is true in much of the world, we still have a lot to do to close this troubling gap between the few and the many when it comes to incomes. And we have to ensure that any economic growth is inclusive and just. But what we really want to emphasize for leaders at every level to remember is that clean energy can be a critical part of the solution to that problem as well, while combating the worst effects of climate change. California has led the way in the United States on the environment for decades, back to the 1960s. It's emerged as a national leader, and we've done it by taking this different approach by assembling a different, much broader coalition and using a different message about local human impacts, jobs, and health. I am very proud to say that we're leading our nation, but I think the other point that is inescapable is that the argument that a progressive energy framework will damage or wreck our economy, the argument of our opponents, belongs on the scrap heap of history. Thank you very much.